thank your ministers opportunities to share in the gospel message and we praise God for that certainly want to thank God as well for my wonderful wife who is sitting back there the one that God gave me and I'm just so grateful and thankful to God for her there is a word from the Lord this morning it comes out of the gospel of Mark Mark the fifth chapter you have your Bibles I would like to encourage you I would like to encourage you to come to that particular passage of Scripture Mark the fifth chapter and we're going to set in at that very first verse This morning I'm reading to you out of the New International Version of Scripture. If you have another translation, just read. We know that the Spirit is able to convey what the Word of God speaks. Amen? Amen. And this is the Word. They went across the lake to the region of the Gerasenes. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an evil spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs, and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain, for he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stone. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, what do you want with me? Jesus, son of the most high God, swear to God that you won't torture me. Jesus had said to him, come out of this man, you evil spirit. And then Jesus asked him, what is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. That is the word of God for the people of God. Blessed be God. Amen. Amen. Let us bow in a word of prayer. My Father and my God, Lord, as we come to this time of preaching, Father, it is my prayer, Lord, that that you would remove any hindering spirit in this place, that you will allow your spirit to come and fall afresh upon us, Grant us spirituals to hear your word, O oh God, that we may apply your word in our lives and live for thee. Yes, o oh, help us, God, and we will be careful to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise, for we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And thank you, God. If I can entitle this sermon, I'd like to entitle it, We Have to Come Out of Our Tombs. We have to come out of our tombs. The action in this morning's text takes place right after Jesus had calmed the sea when he, had, when he and his disciples were in a boat during a storm. To that very tough trip, Jesus and the disciples went to the garrisons But when Jesus landed in the region, as soon as he got out of the boat, he was met by a man with an evil spirit. Uh, How many of you find in your lives, my brothers and sisters, how many times do you say to yourself, as soon as I have gotten through one situation, 
soon as I thought I had gotten out of one ordeal, soon as I've gotten myself out of one piece of drama, here comes something else. We say, I just got out of that situation. I just experienced one victory. I just experienced one breakthrough. But as soon as I got on the other side of the breakthrough, someone else came running up to you with a word of doubt, with a word of negativity, with more drama, with more trouble, with more mess. As soon as we get out of one situation, here comes somebody with an unclean spirit invading our personal space. The text says Jesus got out of the boat and a man with an unclean spirit came from the tombs to meet him. My brothers and sisters, look at where this man came from. He came from the tombs. He came from a, a dead place. He came from a dark place, came from a place where there was no life. He came from a place that was cold and rigid. He came from a place of total isolation and, des and desolation. And he came to Jesus. The man made his habitation in dark places, in the cold place, in the dead place. He made his habitation in an isolated place. He lived there and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain. The Bible says, for he had often been chained by hand and feet, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. My brothers and sisters, he had lived in the dead place so long that the situation had graduated from a natural state to something else entirely. And now he had a supernatural domination over his life. Let me tell you something, it's not what you're in, but it's how long you stay there. Because if you stay there too long, you will find yourself in a place where you can no longer manage the situation. You can no longer handle the circumstance. But now the circumstance is handling you. Now the situation is driving you. Now the situation is managing you. And now you have no more control over it. The situation now has a supernatural domination over the man. He had been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet when he had found himself in a place of death, brokenness, mental torment, and isolation. Folks had tried to bind him up to help keep him manageable. Oftentimes, when people try to help us, they do more harm than good. Come on, come on. When we're being tormented or driven by a force that we can't control, we don't need anybody to bind us up. The last thing we need is to hear an opinion about the situation. Come on, come on. If we got to say anything, let us speak words of encouragement. That's right. That's right. Words like, you're more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Tell them that the Lord is their shepherd and they shall not want. Remind them that the Lord is the light and the salvation of their lives. Remind them that God is able to make their enemies their footstool. Let them know that our God will supply all their needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus, our Lord. Remind them they have power, Holy Ghost power. Remind them that great is he that is in them than he that is in the world. Remind them that God loves them 
And if they just trust God, God will help them through whatever the situation might be. How many know it's right? God will help you through all that you have to go through if you're willing to put your faith and your trust in him. He's able to do exceedingly and abundantly much more than I can think or as God is a mighty God. He's able to meet our needs if we're willing to trust him. But this man was bound. The people had tried to manage his situation. The text says that when they bound his hands and feet, and the man did not stay bound, Scripture says that the man broke the chains, and nobody was strong enough to subdue him. That tells me that the people couldn't help this man. They didn't have enough power. They didn't have authority over what this man was dealing with. Nobody was strong enough to subdue him. The man would cry out and cut himself with stones. How many of you find yourselves right now crying out in the tombs of your life, inflicting pain on yourself late at night when nobody knows the tears you cry, when nobody knows the thoughts running through your mind? When nobody understands the frustration, when nobody understands that you're only striking out because you're trying to find some help within. Nobody knows your story. You have one, though. God is aware of it. You might not can share it with anybody, but you can share it with God, and you find yourself there struggling, wondering how. Can I deal with this situation? How can I deal with this situation? And you've been crying out, crying to Almighty God. But look at what happens when Jesus stops by. Verse 6 through 7 says that when the man saw Jesus, oh, that's, that's enough right there. When the man saw Jesus, he saw what he needed. And I want to encourage you when you see Jesus or you met the one that's able to meet you where you are. And he's promised that he'll never leave you. Mom and daddy might leave you. Husband might leave you. Friend might leave you, but I want you to know this morning, he'll never leave you, nor shall he ever forsake you. He's God, and he's God all by himself. He's the constant that will never leave your life. Look at it. When he saw Jesus, say that when this man saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. Then he shouted at the top of his voice, what do you want with me? Jesus, son of the most high God, swear to God that you will not torture me. Who shouted? That's the question. Who Shout it. At first glance, it looks like the man shouted. But let us look at the text closer. Verse 8. For Jesus had said to him, come out of this man, you evil spirit. The man did not respond to Jesus, but the spirit in the man responded to Jesus. The man did not say anything. Sometimes we find ourselves... Well, we can't even pray. We can't say nothing. I mean, we're so broken. Come on. Come on. We've been beat up. We've been pushed so far to the curb. We're back up against the wall. 
and we can't say anything. We find ourselves in that predicament sometimes. We don't have anything we can say. We're so weak, we're so battered, so torn. Jesus does not deal with us. He deals with the spirit that is driving the situation. That's why we got to be careful how we judge because we can't judge nothing because we don't know the whole story. That's right. That's right. Yes, sir. We don't know the whole story. We don't know where that person has been. We don't know what caused him to be at this point in his life. We've got to be those that are slow to speak, quick to listen, and slow to become angry. Don't start judging when you see them. They might be torn and tattered, but they are children of Almighty God. And God loves them. And he cares about them. They were not a mistake. They just found themselves struggling with something that they couldn't handle. Sometimes we find ourselves where we can't say anything. Jesus deals with the driving source. He deals with what's driving the situation. He commands whatever that source is within you to come out. Jesus has that kind of power. How many of you know Jesus got that kind of power? I just want you to know he got that kind of power. It it, it does not matter where you've been, what you've been through. God has power to meet you right where you are and to bring you over that struggle, bring you over that problem. He has that kind of power. He understands it, that it's not you. Jesus sees beyond you and looks at the spirit that drives you to do what you do. When you find yourself doing things that you know you you should not be doing, stop. Think about it. Give pause there. Humbly submit yourself to the one that's able to help you and cry out to him. That's right. That's right. He'll help you through. Yes, sir. I'm a living witness. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I know it. This ain't something that I read. This is something I experienced. Right. I know about this. Yes, sir. See, I've been down there, but God lifted me up. He set me free from me. How many of you know he'll lift you up and set you free from yourself? I'm a living witness. He'll set you free from yourself. See, I know. This ain't always been no preacher. See, that was a time that you didn't want to see me. I was the worst kind of fellow. But you know, one day God touched me and set me free from me. Help me. See, it, 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 I have been clean, sober, and free for almost 24 years. But it wasn't about me. It was about the God that I serve. He set me free from me. He helped me so that I could help somebody else, so that I could testify about how good he's been. And it wasn't about me being good at that point. He met me where I was, broken, torn, beaten, battered. He helped me. He ain't a respecter of persons. He'll help each and every one that cries out to him, just like the demon, just like the man in the tomb. He cried out. He ran and fell at the knee of Jesus. He needed help. God is a mighty God, church. Jesus sees beyond and he looks at the spirit that's driving you to do what you do. That's why when you hear saints say, I'm glad he looks beyond my faults and supplies my needs. Sometimes there's something driving you that you have no control over. 
when another spirit is driving us, we sound just like the man in the story. Listen, they've been binding me up. They bound my hands. They chained my feet. I can't control this thing. So I broke loose and I ran to the tombs. I've been hanging out down there all by myself, going through frustration, going through disappointments, going through pain, going through trials, going through self-hatred, going through self-degradation, going through everything. And it's tormenting my mind. It's tormenting my heart. It's tormenting my spirit. I didn't mean to cuss them out. I didn't mean to hurt them. I didn't mean to still be on drugs. I didn't mean to still be an alcoholic. I didn't mean to hurt my wife. I didn't mean to hurt my children. I didn't mean to hurt my family. But there is hope. How many of you know there's hope? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I just want you to know there's hope. When we are broken and tattered and God has driven us to places that are abnormal to us. We, he's driven us to that place where, 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 where we can't do nothing but cry out. There's hope. When the light of the world, the resurrection of life comes near the dead place, he speaks to the spirit that is tormenting the man. I want you to know there's hope. When he shows up, he has power to show out. He has that kind of power if we're willing to yield to him. He commands the spirit to come out of the man. Jesus said, come out, unclean spirit. Come out, you evil spirit. He's not talking to the man, but the evil spirit that has been driving the man. We have to look at the spirit and say, in the name of Jesus, come out. The Lord rebukes you. In the name of Jesus, come out hatred. In the name of Jesus, come out jealousy. In the name of Jesus, come out gossip. In the name of Jesus, come out fornicator. In the name of Jesus, come out liar. In the name of Jesus, come out adultery. In the name of Jesus, come out. Come out. Come out wherever you are. Come out. And Jesus asked him. Jesus asked him. Not the man, but the spirit. What is your name? What is your name? Some of us are trying to fight things, and we don't even know how to identify them. Some of you are fighting specific things with the wrong weapons. And you're, you, and you're losing the battle because you really don't know exactly what you're dealing with. In other words, Jesus said, what exactly am I dealing with right now? I don't want to be dealing with hate when it's a jealous spirit. I don't want to be dealing with something else. I need to know specifically what is your name. The answer was and it's not that simple. The Spirit said, my name is Legion, for we are many. We have to understand when you're dealing with an army, and in this case, the Roman army, when they had great and large numbers of soldiers, they put them in legions. A legion consisted of over three, over three to 6,000 soldiers. So when you look at this, you have to understand Jesus is dealing with this demon and this demon's name is legion and this legion has many, many layers. We have to understand that. And some of you right now feel that people don't understand. They think you ought to be over it by now. But they don't understand that it, it, it's not as simple as it looks. It's more 
complex. It's not just one thing. There are multiple layers to what I'm dealing with. And when you deal with those 10, there might be five more under that. See, it, it, it can be much more than the eyes can see, much more than the heart can feel, much more than I can reach out and touch. It's much deeper and much more complex than that. We have to understand that this man had lived in the tombs. He had lived in an isolated place, in a dead place. That's why I'm cutting myself up, doing harm to myself. You think I should be over that relationship? You think I should be over that abuse? That's just one thing. Another thing is I can't make the ends meet in the household. That's another thing. Children won't act right. That's another thing. I got sickness that's invaded the innocence of my body. That's another thing. I'm struggling in my mental place where the battle is being raised and I don't know how to deal with what I'm up against. That's another thing. We're struggling all over in all kinds of things. The community won't act right. I need assistance and, and I can't get no help because they say I've already got enough help, but they don't know my situation. They're struggling, they're struggling within every family. And we've got to learn to, to turn and get on our knees and cry out to the one that's able to help us. He's able to help us if we're willing to trust him. And this legion states that we are many. We are so many, my brothers and sisters, we need to see Jesus. And when we see him, we need to run, fall at his feet, and allow the Lord to deal with the source of our problems. Because all we can do is put a a band-aid on it. How many of you know that you can put band-aids on stuff and some of the times it's going to be all right, but some of the times <laughs> the band-aid won't help because right. right. you need to see who? Jesus. Yes, need to see Jesus, but we need Jesus to go to the source of our pain, to the source of our frustration, to the source of what we're dealing with so that healing can take place. I know that there are legions in the house, and there are many, but the good thing is you can see Jesus. Sometimes we are waiting for the Lord to come to us, and sometimes Jesus says, I'm getting off the boat. Are you willing to see me and meet me halfway? He's getting off the boat. And he's raising the question, are you willing to see me and meet me halfway? Are you willing to participate in your success? Are you willing to participate in your breakthrough? Are you willing to participate in your healing? This morning, you know if this word spoke to you. You know if you have a legion situation, you've been trying to handle it. You've been trying to manage it. You realize it's gotten out of control and you have been living among the tombs for a while now and they have control over you. You want to be free from that. You want to be free. Now I encourage you to come to Jesus. Come and accept him. Come let him handle your situation. You've been trying day in and day out, year after year after year after year. Spring comes, say you're going to do better. Then summer breaks through and you say you're going to do better. Then fall comes. And then the winter of the year comes and, and you continue to say you're going to do better. But all you do is just continue to stand, kneel down, cut yourself, cut yourself. Cut yourself because you refuse to cry out and come to Jesus. If you feel like that's you this morning, as the choir sings a verse of a song, the doors of the church are open. You can come by letter, you can come by Christian experience, you can come as a candidate for baptism if you want to trust him. 
If you really want to trust him, if you want to break through your situation today, just come and give. Come kneel at the altar and cry out to Jesus. I just want you to know Jesus is able to heal your situation. When you come this morning, when you come and trust him, when you come and believe that God is able to meet you at your need, I want you to know he's able if you're willing to come. If you're willing to trust him, don't worry about who's around you. Don't worry about what they might think about you because this ain't about them. This is about you meeting Jesus today, walking out of your situation, stepping out on faith, willing to trust him, willing to trust him, willing to trust him, willing to trust him.